Welcome to this special edition of the Chief AI Officer podcast with Sanjay Puri, the global stage where enterprise leaders decode the real transformation happening inside AI. Today, we bring you a curated set of insights from some of the sharpest minds in technology, governance, and enterprise leadership. This episode follows the real arc of AI maturity, from human responsibility to system intelligence, from data realities to enterprise impact, all the way to the evolving identity of the chief AI officer. So let's begin. AI doesn't start with algorithms, it starts with people, their judgment, their readiness, and the choices leaders make. Our first set of voices reminds us that AI is not here to replace responsibility, but to deepen it. By definition, experience-led models have to be somewhat of a mid bottom-up or a middle-out approach, which is by meeting people where you are. Obviously, if you may not be able to fulfill 100% needs for 100% people. But if you meet them where they are, you can maybe fulfill 80% of 80% people, which is a win. Now, now imagine a different way of looking at this problem, because internet is there to really curate information for you, which is what Gen AI does. Now, agents are going to sit also at this intersection. The key thing is to flip the script and flip the bet. And when you create these policies to reinforce to your employees that these are tools, the AI is not responsible for the data that it gave you. You are responsible for your work output. And this is another piece of tooling the same way that it was with the internet. And we had to teach people early on that you can't trust everything you read on the internet. This was not the same as getting something out of a book that had been edited and vetted because there's a lot of stuff on the internet that's not accurate and not true. This is another twist on that. And so you need to think differently about that. How do you screen that? How do you bless it? Technology can support, but technology can't lead the way. So if we're talking about how is a salesperson going to change how they interact with their customer with legal and procurement behind the scenes, reviewing contracts, that is a business process change. And that's where we can help and support, but we need to partner with the process owners that manage the sales process to be able to educate, train. And that's why we're looking at a, a, a controlled pilot with a small group, and then train the trainer, if you will. The message is unmistakable. AI accelerates, augments, and amplifies. But humans remain accountable. With that foundational set, we move from mindset to machinery and to the future architecture of enterprise intelligence. Agentic AI is reshaping how enterprises think act and collaborate. It's not one model, it's a constellation of intelligent agents mirroring the way organizations truly work. We are actually working together as a group. It's never going to be only one group providing a solution, but it's always be a group with uh, multidisciplinary skills. Mm -hmm. What Agentic AI allows you to do, it's actually leveraging technology in the same way. You can create those skills across different groups, create hierarchy mm -hmm. for making decisions across the Agentic group. So that really allows you pretty much to replicate the kind of connection that happen inside the enterprise of workers and skill set that need to work together to provide solutions. I think with this new technology, that's the advantage that you can look at information which is structured, unstructured across multiple systems. And it's like a workflow, not just a very simple macro or simple action. It's a complex set of activities. That is what I feel is the power of Agentic AI, that it can really do complex decision-making and actioning, not a clean environment of actioning. But even the most advanced agentic systems stand on the single foundation, data. And building that foundation remains one of the hardest, most essential enterprise challenges. Behind every AI breakthrough is months, even years of integration work. 
This is the part of the story that most people don't see, but every enterprise leader knows. There's still a lot of work in, in actually when you go in to build a data fabric and sifting through all the different data repositories and applications that have data and figuring out you know what really is the same context called different things. There's a big opportunity to use AI to really speed up the integration and verification of data. At this point, most models are more limited by their accuracy and hallucination and so on and so forth than they are by anything else. And if you look at the cost curve of, of LLMs, they're falling way faster than Moore's law, right? And for a variety of reasons. And we do expect that that trend will continue. So what we optimize on today is how, how appropriate is a particular LLM for the workflow that it, it, it needs to do in terms of accuracy, latency, and so on and so forth. And uh, and we let the let the cost come down as we as we ramp up volume. And once the data foundation is in place, the enterprise faces the next decisive question: Are we driving real value, or are we just experimenting? The world moved from curiosity to capability, and now to accountability. The era of playing with LLMs is over. Chief AI officers are now being measured by material outcomes. Uh, there was tremendous excitement when the LLMs came and everybody started dabbling with it. There were hundreds of experiments all around the organization, but that did not have a material impact on the bottom line. Everybody was doing something, people were doing PowerPoints and transcription of uh, calls and and writing essays and writing emails and so on that's all nice it's, it's good to be a little better than before but they didn't get, have material impact so what i would say is that focus on four or five big themes find out those four or five big themes that you can hunker down double down on you know the first thing is let's just Let's just bet on it. This technology is something that's not going away. We believe it's going to grow our business. We believe it's going to grow our profit because we can be more efficient with it. So we'll bet on it. And then we're gonna to have to be smart about how we continue to use it going forward. And we're gonna get there pretty quickly um, as a team because we are, are all so on board by saying, we know this is the future. High impact demands high integrity. And that is where governance becomes the quiet superpower inside every successful AI enterprise. Responsible AI isn't a policy document. It's a living system of oversight, discipline and cross-functional leadership. Instead of AI ethics, we have an AI model risk oversight committee. And that's the committee which is comprises of a set of risk leaders from our risk team. I'm part of that as well, but leaders across the company that are managing the risk portfolio of the company. They're the ones who are looking at every Gen AI use case that has to go, that, that is recommended to go into production. This team is a gate check for each one of those use cases to ensure that we are meeting the requirements that we have put in place for AI to be ethical and responsible. And that applies for both our classical AI, which is the mathematical models and our generative AI, which is the language model. It is my observation that a lot of the new regulations are really just combining elements from existing regulations. And I think just applying common sense and thinking about what could go wrong and checking with your legal or GRC department when in doubt is probably good. And ultimately, this entire ecosystem, from vision to governance, converges into a single question. Who leads it? The chief AI officer is not a technical role. It is an enterprise leadership one, and one that must continually earn its seat at the table. You know, when you have a C and an O in your title, you are a business executive. You are an enterprise leader. And you need a mean. That means you have to demonstrate, and you're one of the new ones, right? Which means you have to fight your way in to be relevant in the room and in the conversation. I think for CAIOs, it's how do they ensure they're in, you know, that they've elevated themselves to be in the right conversations, that they 
find that role to be one where they're relevant. From accountability to agentic systems, from data foundations to governance, this is the new architecture of enterprise intelligence. The chief AI officer stands at the intersection of technology, business and leadership, shaping not just workflows, but the very future of the enterprise. Thank you for joining us on the special edition of the Chief AI Officer podcast with Sanjay Puri. The next chapter of AI leadership is unfolding and we are here to define it.